Hey Community Church, it's Jonathan Curry, the director of Next Steps, and we are here to keep, continue on in our series on the book of Ephesians. We're starting in chapter 5 today, 5 verse 1. Yesterday we finished up 4, so today we're starting on 5, and there's a whole bunch of stuff to get into, so let's just jump right into it here. 5 1 says, follow God's example. And really we could open and close our whole study right there, follow God's example. You know, the Bible says that, that we're Christians and calls us Christians and followers of Christ. And really, the whole idea is that we follow his example and follow his truth. And this whole next passage is really going to kind of come into to focus for that idea. It says, therefore, which we always want to see what it's there for, as dearly loved children, meaning that God loves you, he has this amazing, wonderful plan, and treats you as part of his own. Um, and walk in the way of love. Just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. You know, so often we forget about the amazing sacrifice that Christ had and gave us. And it's important for us to always keep that in mind, always keep that in focus. God has given us so much and, and his sacrifice for us was so great that we really need to start like leaning into that and, and not being so concerned about what can I get away with so much as what can I do more for God? And that's what Paul's really going to unpack here in the next couple of verses. He says in verse 3, be among you, there, <clears throat> sorry, but among you, there must not be a, even a hint of sexual immorality or any kind of impurity or greed because these are improper for God's holy people. Nor should there be obscenity, foolish talk, or coarse joking, which are out of place, but rather thanksgiving. For of this you can be sure, no immoral, impure, or greedy person, such as a person as an idolater, has in any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of such things God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. Therefore, do not be partners with him. You know, I've had so many people have conversations with me before, and, and they've asked the question, uh, you know, can we do this? Is it appropriate for us to do that? What about this? Is it okay in this scenario? And, and while I understand the nature of the question, the truth of the matter is, as Christians, we're not supposed to toe the line. We're supposed to be so far away from the line, so pressed into God's grace, so understanding of his sacrifice, that the line doesn't become something that we consider. The line isn't something we say, how much can I get away with until? It's how much grace has God given me and therefore how much further and closer to him do I need to run and how much further can I get away from the world that I'm, that I'm surrounded by. Um, and then in verse 8 it says this, For you were once in darkness, but now you are in the light of the Lord. Live as children in the light. There's this idea we have to live and walk. We're, we're supposed to be little Christians, little Christ. Every place that we go, we're walking in light. We're embracing the light. We are doing the things that are closer to what God is like and not just kind of like, well, I'm going to be okay because I'm going to be accepted by the world if I don't get too fanatical. And that's kind of sometimes our stance. You know, we're trying to figure out how, how, how sold out for God can I be without being considered a, a fanatic or a space cadet or somebody that's just not in touch with the world today. Paul says, don't worry about the world today. Worry about being closer to God and pressing in and not making light of the grace and the sacrifice that he's brought before us. Verse 9, for the fruit of the light consists of all goodness and righteousness and truth. And then verse 10, and find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with fruitless deeds or darkness, but rather expose them. It is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret, but everything is exposed by the light. Become, and it becomes visible, and everything that is illuminated becomes light. That is why it says, Wake, O sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine with you, shine on you. My mother used to have a, a, a phrase that she used to say. She'd say, you know, your sins will always find you out. And we, we, we would be talking about world events. We'd be talking about even uh, my life as a teenager and, and some of the things that I would, she would think I was trying to hide or conceal from her. And, and every once in a while, I was trying to conceal one or two things from her. And she would always say, Jonathan, your sins will find you out. And, and it was true. Always, they, they always cut up to me. There was never something that I could ever get away with, uh, mostly because my mom has eyes in the back of her head, but also because I had, the, uh, I had a God who wanted to make sure that I was living a life that was pleasing to him. And so he wanted to expose the darkness. He wanted to expose the elements of my life that weren't agreeable to him so that I might run closer to him, so that I might walk in a path that's with him instead of constantly trying to pull in a different direction, you know, as close enough to the world as I can possibly get and still be considered, you know, a Christian kind of thing. Verse 15 says, be careful then how you live, not as unwise but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. 
that's something we should probably consider just even out of the context of this particular verse in the context of where we're living our lives today to make the most of every opportunity. You may say, I'm looking at the same four walls that I was looking at yesterday. And yeah, maybe you are. But what can you do in this opportunity? What's that project you've been putting off? What's that moment that you need to share with that family member? What's that thing that you've always wanted to do? Perhaps you can create a special memory. Perhaps you can create something different and, and, and uh, enhance a relationship that you wouldn't have had time to had you been in court, required to go to work. Your children have been required to go to school that particular day. Make the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk with wine, which leads to the botry. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms, hymns, and songs of the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to the God, Father, to the God, to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I think that's the perfect place to leave you. Today, perhaps there's a new song that should be sung in your household. Perhaps there's a new day that's dawning. It's a new moment for you to reach out over the phone, over Skype or video chat, or even through the people in your own house that you can reach out to and say, this is the day, this is the time, this is the moment where we're going to build a memory. We're going to create an idea. We're going to create an opportunity for us to just draw closer to you, Lord, and draw closer to each other. Make the most of every opportunity that you can. And, and that's what I want to leave you with today. So let's close our time in just a quick word of prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, thanks for loving and taking care of us. Lord, it may not seem right to thank you for this uh, moment we're in, in quarantine, but Lord, we thank you for that you are in control. And so, Lord, if you're in control, then we're thankful for what we're experiencing right now. Lord, with all the uncertainty that we're surrounded with, we know and can be certain of your hand upon our lives. So, Father, thank you for that. I thank you for all the great things you're doing and how you're always taking care of us. Lord, we love you. Allow this message uh, and this, these verses to be sealed in our heart. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys, it was an honor to hang out with you again today. We look forward to seeing you again tomorrow around the same time. Until then, have a blessed day.